Thike rupture discs are designed to provide instantaneous pressure relief at a predefined pressure and temperature. Installation is an important consideration that can affect the performance of a rupture disc. Installation instructions are included with all Fike rupture disc shipments. These instructions should be followed carefully and completely. To aid in this procedure, we will now demonstrate the recommended installation procedure. Remember to place the rupture disc assembly where it will have sufficient clearance to operate unhindered. The rupture disc assembly should be vented to a safe area where people and equipment are not at risk, as a system discharge can be hazardous or cause injury. Baffle plates used on the end of outlet piping will redirect but not eliminate potentially dangerous system discharge. The piping near the rupture disc assembly should be braced to absorb shock caused by the opening of a rupture disc. Fike provides a danger sign with all rupture disc shipments and it should be placed in a conspicuous location near the zone of potential danger. Keep the danger sign clean and unobstructed for ease of viewing. To install a new rupture disc, remove the burst rupture disc assembly from its piping. Please use caution as a ruptured disc may have sharp edges. Remove cap screws and separate the holder components. If this is an existing installation, it is important at this point to do a visual inspection of the ruptured disc holder. Inspect the holder seat area for nicks, scratches, corrosion, or deposits left by the process media. If necessary, hand polish the seat area with Scotch-Brite, superfine steel wool, or a fine emery cloth. Before installing a new rupture disc into the rupture disc holder, clean the seat area with a solvent compatible with your media. To verify that the holder has not become deformed, place a straight edge on the flat flange mating surfaces of the base and hold down. If the flat surfaces are not parallel with the straight edge, the holder should be replaced immediately. Visually inspect the rupture disc for shipping damage. Read the complete information contained on the rupture disc tag. Verify that the disc size, type, pressure, and temperature are correct for your system. After verifying that you have the correct rupture disc, carefully place forward acting rupture discs into the base of the holder or if the rupture disc is reverse acting, carefully place the disc into the hold down of the holder. Check the rupture disc tag and make sure that the side labeled vent side faces downstream. Rupture disc tags with flow arrows must point in the same direction as the flow arrows on the rupture disc holder. Carefully place the base or hold down on top of the disc. Install cap screws. Check to be sure the gap between the base and the hold down is equal all the way around the holder. If it is not, take the rupture disc holder apart and reassemble. Apply the recommended cap screw torque at this time. This can be found in the written installation and the maintenance instructions. As part of the planned or routine shutdowns and maintenance, TQ and TQ Plus series holders can be removed from between companion flanges and inspected for corrosion or damage. As long as the disc is not removed from the holder or the cap screws are loosened in any way and there are no visible signs of corrosion or damage, the assembly can then be reinstalled. After assembling the rupture disc and holder or removing the assembly for inspection, you are ready to install the rupture disc assembly into your piping system. Place gaskets on the top and bottom of the rupture disc holder as needed. Gaskets that are subject to cold flow are not recommended. Carefully place the rupture disc assembly between the piping flanges. Check to ensure the holder flow arrows point downstream. Care should be taken not to damage the dome of the rupture disc, being particularly careful if it protrudes above the hold down of the rupture disc holder. Check to see that all studs and nuts are the correct size. Lubricate the studs with a light, free-running oil such as 20 grade. Studs and nuts that show evidence of galling should not be used. Insert the studs into the flange and finger tighten. Check to see that the gap is still equal. If it is not, 
loosen the studs and the nuts, and adjust flanges until the gap is once again equal. To determine the required torque, refer to the appropriate stud torque chart included in the written installation instructions. Find the nominal rupture disc size and ANSI rating of your flange. Follow the row across the column that contains your rupture disc type to determine what is required for your rupture disc in foot-pounds. Using a crisscross pattern, apply torque in 25% increments. For example, if the required torque is 100 foot-pounds, torque would be applied in 25 foot-pound increments using the crisscross pattern. After each torque step, it is recommended that you check the gap between the base and the hold down to be sure that it is still equal. After the final torque step has been completed, make one revolution around the flange to be sure that each stud has received the correct amount of torque. Fike rupture discs and holders come in many sizes and types. A common requirement of all designs is proper handling and installation. We realize that this demonstration has been done under ideal circumstances. We also realize that the location of your particular rupture disc may not be ideal. However, when these steps and written instructions are followed as closely as possible, the performance and service life of your rupture disc may be enhanced. As always, contact FIKE Technical Support or your local FIKE representative if you have any questions or need any assistance.